into a new series. Say it with me, new series. It's a new series. And right off the bat, I want to tell you, this series is going to be nine weeks long. Woo! What? It's going to take us all the way to Christmas. And the reason it's nine weeks long, it's because it's entitled The Fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, to 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So we're actually going to be two weeks away from Christmas preaching on self-control. Jesus help us, right? We're like at the, on the shopping on, online, Amazon, and then we're going to be being ministered to about self-control. Lord, tell me God is not in control. Tell me God is not leading our steps, right? So, um, but today I have the privilege to start off with love, Imagine an orange tree and you're walking through. I'm from Orange County, so there is a lot of these around, or, or it could be any type of agriculture, right? Any type of plant, any type of tree, but orange trees were very, very familiar to us. Um, and imagine you're seeing this orange tree and it's planted. Say it's planted. Okay, what else does an orange tree need? It needs water, right? And so it has water and it has sunshine and it's getting all the nutrients from the soil. So question, come on, here's a question for you this morning. What is the natural outcome of an orange tree? Come on, what is the natural outcome? Yeah, some of you guys are looking at me like, why is she even asking this? Like such a simple question, right? Yeah, it bears oranges. It grows and it bears oranges. In other words, the natural outcome of a tree that is planted, that is receiving water, Holy Spirit, right, that it's getting nutrients, the word of God, right, the natural outcome is that it will bear fruit. In the same way, church, when we are rooted in Christ, when we are planted in the house of the Lord, when we are led by the Holy Spirit. Now, listen to this, the evidence of this, because there will be evidence, there will be receipts, come on, of our relationship with the Holy Spirit is the fruit that grows in your life. By their fruits, they shall be known. Now, it's important to know that bearing fruit is not something we accomplish on our own. And I want to say this right from the beginning. It is not something we can force. It is not something we can produce. We can try to do it. We can try to manipulate it. We can go and buy fake oranges and hot glue them to our tree. Many people do. But it's not sustainable. It's not organic. Because bearing fruit is the work of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Bearing fruit means I have received Jesus in my heart. And because he is my Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit isn't just with me, but the Holy Spirit is inside of me. And when the Holy Spirit is inside of me, it is working inside of me. And now I cooperate with the Holy Spirit and I bear fruit. As we stay connected to Jesus, and in the, in the Bible actually uses this, this example of the vine, and we stay connected to the vine, the fruit will naturally appear. So if there is no fruit, I question, is there a Holy Spirit working in your life? If you gotta manipulate the fruit, if you gotta force the fruit, you got the smile down, you got the lingo down, you got the church clothes down, you show up on Sunday mornings, but is the Holy Spirit inside of you? Because these fruits are more than just good qualities. They are number one, the fruit of the Spirit is our witness to the world that we are truly walking with Jesus. It is a witness to people and it's a reflection of God's character. These two things, it is that witness and it is that reflection. 
Number one, the witness to the world that we are truly walking with Jesus. Matthew 7, 16 to 18 and verse 20. Literally put on your seatbelts. Hold on to your seat. Listen to what the word of God says. You can identify them by their fruit. That is by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes? Many of you, ooh, you're trying to pick grapes from thorn bushes. Those 12.30, you know, p.m., midnight, little text messages. You think you're going to get grapes? You're going to get thorn bushes. That's who texts at 12.30. A guy wanted, is texting you at 12.30? He doesn't want you as a wife. It's another type of call. It's a thorn bush call. And you, yeah, it's a thorn bush call. Say, hey, Thornbush, when you're a grape, call me at a proper hour and ask me out on a date. Take me to dinner. Let's go to church on Sunday. Put the name and then put Thornbush next to it, right? This Thornbush. This Thornbush. I'm, I, are you, are you, did you come to have church this morning or did you come to put religion on? Come on. It says, or can you get figs from thistles? Obviously, the answer is no. Verse 17, a good tree produces, come on, church, a good tree produces, a good tree will produce, and a bad tree will produce bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. Yes. Just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so, I told you to hold on. We're not talking about trees. I don't know if you got it yet, but we're not talking about trees. We're talking about people. We're talking about those people you have in your favorites, those people you have in your contacts, those, those people. I'm just telling you, you want to know if he's it? You want to know if she's the one? You want to know if this is the person? You want to know what's going on in their life, that they're a good friend? The word of God says, so you can identify people by their actions. Because their actions is their fruit. In other words, our faith isn't just about when we say we believe in Jesus. It's how we live like Jesus. Can I get an amen to that? Come on. So again, you're walking through a garden, you know, and you see oranges hanging on a tree and you say this is a orange tree. You see apples hanging on a tree and you don't wonder is, it, is this an orange tree? Can this be a pear tree? Is this a grapevine? No. When you see the fruit hanging on the tree, I see the orange, I say it's an orange tree. If you see bad fruit, if you see bad actions, if you see a bad witness, then you know it's a bad tree. It's a bad tree. Oh, pastor, help me pray. Help me pray if this is the one. What has he shown you? What has she shown you? Are they leading you in the right path? Do they have good fruit? Not what they say, what they do. Our lives should be identifiable by the fruit we bear. Jesus warns us not to be deceived by the words, not to be deceived by gifts, not to be deceived by, by oh, they're so suave, oh, they're so popular, oh, they're so in. It even says not to be deceived by your own heart because the feelings of your heart is deceiving. So then, Instead, we are to identify true Christians by the fruit of their lives, their actions, their character, their decisions, the impact that they have on other people. What do people say about them? It can be a lot different with, with what you want to see about them. But what do people say? Just as the fruit is a natural result of what's happening in the soil that it's planted beneath the surface, so is the fruit in our lives the natural result of what's happening in our hearts. 
what's actually going on on the inside again. I could come here this morning with a smile on my face, but be wicked on the inside. You got those suave messages. You got those oof and the dressing and the, the perfume and the, oh, she's so cute. And oh, she's that, that. But is she wicked on the inside? Where is she leading you? Is he wrong? The condition of your heart will always manifest in your behavior. And I like to say, believe a person when they show you who they are. Come on, believe a person when they show you who they are. Not when they tell you who they are. Not when they tell you or recite the Bible verses. Not when they tell you what they believe. Believe a person when they show you with their life with their actions, with what's coming out. Jesus goes on to ask, can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? This principle here is the nature of the tree determines the nature of the fruit. The nature of the person will determine the nature of your fruit. Our actions reflect our true nature. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is one, it's a witness to who the world, to the world that we are truly walking with Jesus. And number two, it's a reflection of God's character. See, each fruit listed in Galatians 5 is the nature of God's character. It's who he is. God is love. And as we grow in Christ's likeness, these attributes, this love, this peace, the patience, the goodness, the kindness, they should come out as evidence, as a reflection of who God is to the world, right? Our lives should mirror God's character. We're not perfect, but every day we are becoming more like God. Every day we are becoming more like Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit refers to the character. So these qualities are not just about what we do, but about who we are becoming in Christ. It is not, I want to put this orange on. I want to put this apple on. It's, Lord, transform me on the inside so I naturally produce the orange and produce the apple. So I naturally produce love. So it's coming from me because it comes from you. We receive from him and so we give. As Jesus said in John 13, 35, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love each other. See, Paul makes it clear in 1 Corinthians. It's one of the passages that are usually um, used in uh, weddings. But he comes to say that without love, everything else, all the other gifts, we can be so good at so many things. And you can give to the poor, and you can serve, and you can sacrifice, and you can pray, and you can show up again and again. But it says, but it, they become meaningless meaningless. What a strong word. Everything I do, me getting up on Sunday morning, me preparing for hours the message, me studying all week, me putting it together, me coming to serve, me, oh, yeah, everything I do becomes meaningless. Did I say something wrong? Oh, oh yeah, okay. It's my Chicana inside, right? Meaningless. It's, oh, what? Everything becomes meaningless without what? Without love. Love is not just this warm feeling or the little butterflies that later turn into worms most of the time. Like you're like, what? They used to be butterflies. Love is the essence of God's character of God's nature. God is love. Love is the foundational, the foundation of all of the fruits. See, we have to, we have to build upon love. We don't just add love. We have this as a foundation and everything else builds upon love. And we often think that this, the spirit, the fruits of the spirit are, you know, love, but they're actually interconnected. One develops the other. Love is just the starting point, and it's the root of all these other fruits. But without love, joy loses its authenticity. 
Without love, peace becomes shallow. Without love, patience is nearly impossible to maintain. Because you're like, I'm going to count to 10. I'm going to count to 20. I'm going to count to 100. And you want to strangle your children. But when you love them, when you love them, even though you want to strangle them, you don't. Right? And you're like, obviously. No, it's not obvious. Because you love. That's why you forgive. And that's why you welcome somebody in and then they did you dirty, but you're like, oh, you forgive again because it's love. Because it's love. Jesus said in John 15, 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And to do this, we gotta receive the love of God first. And this type of love that Paul speaks in Galatians is this agape love, this sacrificial. It's not this, ooh, googly eyes. Oh, I'm melting in my boots. No, it's not that type of love. It's sacrifice. It's the love that gets up at two in the morning. It's the love that holds your child's vomit in your hands. That's the type of love. It's the love that as, you know, as a couple, you're there for each other with cancer, with this other thing that you're forgiving, that you're fighting. It's the type of love that unites you as a family. And you're like, we're not perfect and we're stumbling, but we're here together. That's the type of love. It's agape love. It's I will sacrifice for you. I'm not here for the good time. I'm not here just for the carnasada. I'm not here for the free drinks. I'm here to sacrifice. I'm here for the cleanup. This is not dependent on the actions or worthiness of others. This is the love that God shows us when he sent his son. Listen to this. This is the love that Jesus, his life wasn't taken from him. He gave it. He gave it willingly. Agape love. And not only that, it's you receive God's unconditional love and then you re reflect God's unconditional love. 1 John 4.19 says, we love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. It is like this cup and when you have a cup that's overflowing, you can give to everyone else around because it is overflowing. But if there's not enough even for you, what are you gonna give? What are you gonna give? You gotta give from the overflow. You gotta go give not from what you're, you're in, in the sense of the love, it needs to overflow so it can catch all and it can uh, connect and it can um, touch the lives of all of those that are around you. We are called to reflect God's love to a world around us. And one of the greatest misunderstandings about love is thinking that it is an emotion. But biblical love is more than a feeling, it's an action. So we know it's sacrificial and now we know it's an action. It's a choice. Yes, love is patient, it says in the word of God. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love is not this. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. It's, it keeps no record of being wrong. Oh my gosh, I need to work on that. I'm a great record keeper. I don't know about you. I'm like 1998, right? It does not rejoice about injustices, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. And then it says, three things will last forever. Yes, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So now a question. How can love flow through us? How? If we want to allow the fruit of love to flow through us, we need to be willing to lay down our own desires and preferences. See, it's not about me, Lord. It's about your love flowing through me. I'm gonna lay aside my own desires and my preferences for the good of others, for the good of my children, for the good of the church, for the good of this world, this community. I'm gonna sacrifice I'm gonna receive from you and give to them. This is true in big ways and small ways. 
This is true in the big things we do, but to be honest, it's more true in the small daily decisions. Showing kindness to someone who frustrates you. How about serving others without expecting anything in return? How about a big one? Forgiving someone that hasn't even asked for forgiveness. Mm, that's a big one. I think that's homework, right? Like, I left church today with homework. Or simply being more patient with your child. That's love. That's the fruit of love. It stems. Yes, it's patience, but it stems from love. You see that child, and again, like me when I was little, there I go again, spilling the milk. Spilling the milk yet again at the table, and you're like, oh, okay. One of the greatest challenges to letting love flow is dealing with conflict, and I know that we are in conflicts. I know when someone hurts you and disappoints you and frustrates you, your natural response is to get angry and to withdraw. But the true test of love is that when someone frustrates you, when someone wrongs you, when someone does something that you do not agree with, the true test of love is how we respond to those hurts. Do we retaliate? Do we get even? Do we make them pay or do we, by grace, by the grace of God, because it is not, if it was up to us, I'd cut them, right? But you're not cutting them. You're not cutting them out of your favorites. You're not cutting them out of your life. You're not physically cutting them. <laughs> because he first loved me, then I can love and I can forgive. Jesus went as far as to call us to love our enemies and to pray for those who come against you. Remember, again, we can't do it in our own strength, and that's what I really want to get past to you guys. We're not trying to put this on. We're not saying, oh, this week is love. Let, let, me, let me hot glue it on. Next week is patience. Oh, yeah, let me, let me get the glue gun. Here, here goes another. We're not doing that. We're saying, Lord, if I'm not producing fruit, it's because something's going on inside of me. So this week, make it a point to examine our actions and attitudes and ask yourself, where can I be more intentional about showing love? Where do I need to extend grace? Or where or who? Here's a big one, and I told you it was your homework. Or who do I need to forgive? Close your eyes. Let's pray. Father, fill our hearts, fill our hearts. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. Fill our hearts with your love. You loved us first. We receive it and let it overflow into every area of our lives. Teach us to love as you have first loved us. Selflessly, sacrificially and unconditionally. May your love be evident in our words. May your love be evident in our actions. May your love be evident in our relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. And Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while you were still sinners, Listen to this, listen to this, I'm closing. Give me one more minute. God demonstrated his love for us that while we were still sinners, meaning while we still couldn't see and couldn't even bear an orange, while we were still broken and bruised and dirty, while we were still sinners, Jesus died. Christ Jesus died on a cross for us. So I want to extend to you the invitation to receive the love of Jesus. Pastor, I can't love that person. I can't love, my, they've, they've gone to, through so much. There's, I'm not asking you to do it. I'm asking to allow, to receive God's love. So from the overflow, from the overflow of that, you can do it. It will be done. But for that, you need to have the love of God. 
in order to have the love of God and to be near God and to be with God, you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so at the count of three, at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. Every person that's gonna want to do the salvation prayer, wants to pray this prayer where you wanna say, yes, one, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I have wronged and I am repentant of that. Two, I acknowledge that only through Christ Jesus that died on a cross can I receive salvation. And three, that when I raise my hand, I say yes. Yes, I want the free gift of salvation and eternal life. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. And we're going to pray this prayer together. But today is your morning. Pastor, but I just don't have it together. I don't even know. I don't even go to a church. It's not about a church. It is not about religion. It is about your heart opening up to Jesus and allowing him in. So again, here we go. Are you ready? This is your morning. This is your morning for salvation. Let's do it. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Does anybody want to receive? Yes. One, two, yes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Come on. Thirteen, fourteen. Come on. Come on. Anybody else? Fifteen. I see your hand. I see your hand. Yes. Fifteen. Fifteen. So we're going to pray this prayer. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's, it's, you could say it's one of the shortest prayers, but it is eternity changing it will change your eternity that's it you got your ticket to heaven are we ready let's pray close your eyes and open your heart say Jesus come in tell him Jesus come into my heart heavenly father repeat after me heavenly father I admit that I am a sinner I admit that I have done wrong and that most likely I will do wrong again. But today I surrender. I surrender my life to you. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. As I repent of my sins, I know that you wash me clean and you will continue to renew me day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand to your feet and let's finish off praising Jesus.